Hey everyone, today I found a neat little study that I wanted to share with you. If it wasn't obvious, one of my favorite subfields within biology is ecology. Ecology is an incredible science, and when you learn more about it, you get this really wild perspective of life on Earth as this ever-flowing chemical super-reaction where biomatter and chemical energy flows between organisms through trophic levels and uh, back and forth between living matter and soil detritus. It's a really eye-opening science that explores how life interacts with the world around it. Now before I get too carried away talking about how awesome ecology is, this study in particular examines the ecology of tropical tree nuts with respect to their manipulation by and interaction with various animal species. It's like an expose on how this particular type of biomatter gets broken down by other life forms. The authors say, quote, Carrion scavenging is a well-studied phenomenon, but virtually nothing is known about scavenging on plant material, especially on remnants of cracked nuts. Just like meat, the insides of hard-shelled nuts are high in energetic value, and both foods are difficult to acquire. In the Thai forest, chimpanzees, pan troglodytes, and red river hogs, Patamacorus porcus, crack nuts by using tools or strong jaws, respectively. Unquote. The authors then explain how they set up cameras to watch how other animals interacted with the leftover shells of these nuts after the chimps and the hogs had left them behind. What they saw was what you might expect, but it was also really interesting. First and foremost, I want to reiterate what the author said in the beginning of their abstract, that the insides of these hard-shelled nuts are lined with a soft tissue, and this soft tissue is very high in protein. It's very high in chemical energy. And so just like meat, it's a very valuable food source. And so you'll notice how most of these animals will be really attracted to this high-energy food stuff, but it'll normally be something that they can't get on their own. They're just not strong enough to crack open these nuts. And that's why they depend on the chimpanzees or the hogs to do it for them, and they scavenge the leftovers. They notice that bird species like African guinea fowl would come and try and pick at these seeds. Some of the species that they saw were the Agalestris meleagrides and Gatera veroxi, which are African birds that look like a mix between small turkeys and hens. These largely ground-based birds walk around and peck at various protein sources, like bugs. They really enjoy scorpions and ticks and flies and arthropods like that. Now, insects will naturally be attracted to the soft tissue that lines the inside of the nutshell. And these birds can approach and eat both the soft flesh and the insects at their leisure. The researchers also noticed that squirrels, like those of the genus Scrunidea, would occasionally attempt to collect the shells and eat the soft tissue lining the inside, as well as any remaining bits of seed flesh that might remain in the proximal area. After all, hogs and chimps are pretty messy eaters, so they'd inevitably leave behind a scattering of crumbs that these smaller scavengers can gather and eat. It's kind of cool that as the seed is physically destroyed in the process of being consumed and moved along the trophic chain, its fractured biomass feeds not just the primary consumer that broke it apart, but it also feeds all of the little peripheral critters that come out of hiding to grab a crumb. Now, most interestingly, the authors describe a species of Pseudimangabes called Circasibus atis, which would approach the nutshells and chew on them with great caution. These mangabees are occasionally killed and consumed by chimps, so they've quite rightfully come to be cautious of anything that might suggest chimps are nearby. The authors say, quote, Mangabees showed elevated levels of vigilance at the chimpanzee nutcracking sites compared with other foraging sites, suggesting that they perceived elevated danger at these sites, unquote. So the mangabees will approach the nuts cautiously. They'll eat as much as they can, as fast as they can, from a food source that they usually can't access. And as they do this, they're on high alert. They're looking out for chimps that might come back or that might fall from a tree and, and attack them. And then when they're done, they scurry back into the shadows. Lastly, the authors say, quote, scavenging on remnants of cracked nuts is a hitherto understudied type of foraging behavior 
that could be widespread in nature and increases the complexity of community ecology in tropical rainforests." Unquote. This is a really neat idea, and I'd be interested to see where further study in this line of thought goes, if only so that we can further understand the ecological orchestra that is life.